Hi guys, welcome back to uh, Snakes and Adders Intermediate Series. I've just had a total nightmare and recorded, or at least I thought I was recording this episode, to find out that it turned off after 20 seconds. I've been talking to the camera for 10 minutes with nothing happening, and I've put the snake back. Now I've come to get it out. She's in a decidedly worse mood than she was when I got her out the first time, which wasn't exactly compliant. So this should make for an interesting video, as no doubt her patience is wearing thin. Today's episode in the Intermediate Series is episode 15, and we're dealing with Vietnamese Blue Beauty Snakes, Latin name Orthriophis tenurus calisianus. This is the new boy of the striped-tailed rat snakes. So we've got the more established species like the Chinese beauty snake, which is Orthriophis tenurus tenurus, and the Taiwan beauty snake, Orthriophis tenurus frizi, which are usually slightly more compliant and easier to work with, even though the Taiwan is a big boy, is a chunky boy, carries some weight. Um, this uh, is a bit more elegant and slender, but a lot longer. So uh, it was first described officially by Schultz in 2010, although it's not quite as clear cut as that. Whether it be the data collected and the date for the holotype, or when it was described before being properly described with re and recognized, it's somewhat convoluted, but we'll try our best to navigate our way through it. The taxonomic history thus far is a Lafitinura subspecies by Schultz in 1996 and Elafe tenura muquadi and Yunanensis by Schultz in 1996. This also was echoed by Orlov in 2000 and it was noted that Maquadi and Yunanensis would integrate naturally within Vietnam. So the suggestion was this was the result, which was later proven to be false. Elafe tenura by Ziegler in 2002, Elafe tenura calisianus, so the first time we see the calisianus name, which was by Schultz in 2010, Orthriophis tenurus calisianus uh, by Schultz in 2010, which is when the rat snake review all sort of took place and we got all the new families, Zemenis and Rhinetchis and, and Orthriophis and Colignathus and Oreocryptophis, when they decided to complicate our lives and make everything not a laffe anymore. Um, and then that was also confirmed by uh, later in 2013 as Orthriophis tenurus calisianus once again. The geographic range of the subspecies is Vietnam, Cambodia and Thailand. Now the next bit is a gobful, but I will try my best, and if you are from Vietnam, I am trying my best not to offend you. I'm from Yorkshire, and pronouncing these uh, area names will be interesting for me. But the tight locality is from Ku Bao Ton Tien Nien Ki Go, which is a nature reserve in the Ha Tin province of Vietnam. So just past the coastal floodplain, there is a elongate north to south uh, forested area with cave networks, and that is where this animal stronghold within Vietnam is. The nearest weather data that I could find was with timeanddate.com, and that was for Da Nang, which is central Vietnam, just slightly more north of uh, Ha Tinh. So, uh, the hot season runs through June to August with daytime highs between 34 and 35 degrees Celsius and nighttime lows of 25 to 26 degrees Celsius. Cool season runs through November to February with daytime highs of 25 to 28 and nighttime lows of 19 to 22. The wet season it peaks in October with 220 mil of rain in the month and the rainy season runs from September through to December. As with the other Tenura subspecies, they are associated with cave networks. This will help to be able to, achieve, uh, able to escape excessive heat in summer and excessive cold in winter. Caves make fabulous insulators. Also, they're going to get some protection from the canopy of the forest where they live, so that the direct heat of the day at 34 degrees, they're not necessarily going to experience. And they're going to be able to find microhabitat, <coughs> excuse me, microhabitats where they're cooler, and they can maintain their temperature uh, more uh, more easily. So the accepted uh, thermal range in captivity is between 30 and 32 degrees at the hotspot, and then we would allow them to move away. Uh, we would never get up to the 35 uh, degrees. That's excessive for this species. We'd, they'd rarely be out during the peak of those sorts of temperatures, and they would uh, take shelter away from that. More than likely, if we kept them that warm, they'd end up regurgitating or have some seriously bad sh sheds and dehydration. They've got a very, very fast metabolism and huge appetites, but they do seem to shun excessively large meals and will opt for multiple prey items of a smaller size rather than huge meals. 
um, and you know this is this is a uh, an issue that we've had in the past where they'll attempt a large rat and they just they'll get maybe the head in and, and, and just bail on it whereas if we offer them a couple of small rats or even a couple of medium rats for such as this huge girl there's no problem but the big meals do seem to cause a bit of an issue and that is a trait I've noticed that runs through some of the striped tailed rat snakes um, as far as uh, adult size goes up for contention this is a good sized girl she's a proven breeder and she is I don't know approximately eight feet long um, she is uh, relatively slender I mean still a stocky snake over the eight feet but overall as build goes athletic racer like uh, and agile would be words that I'd use to describe the build you have varying dimensions really bare minimum want to be five feet long three feet high two feet deep potentially even bigger for a monster like this one to be able to uh, crawl around the tank for as far as heating goes we'd use a ceramic heat emitter or CHE within a bulb guard on a thermostat to control the temperature the basking area of 30 to 32 would be on the bows and branches and foliage directly beneath that heater with the opportunity for the animal to retire both down and across to escape from the heat. Uh, it's commonly accepted now that full spectrum ultraviolet lighting and UVB is beneficial to snakes uh, and for those that are interested in providing that something like the Arcadia Shade Dweller would, could go in the, the roof of the tank. Uh, within a foot that's a UV index of one and then the animal can escape and retire from that as well and this should be over towards the heated area with the ceramic so that the uh, the, the um, photo area and heat area thermal and photo areas are together and then they can move away to shaded areas within the tank temperament uh, mixed bag uh, which is why we put them into Intermediate, uh, you'll notice that we've had the Taiwans in beginner, the Chinese in beginner. Um, actually, the the, uh, the the blue beauties are uh, incredibly defensive as babies. Will calm down a bit, but invariably as they get bigger, they get a lot more defensive. And even though you can't hear her, probably there is a lot of low-level hissing going on at this point, and just the corners of the mouth gaping, just to let and uh, let me know that I'm treading on thin ice. And at some point, no doubt, she's going to show her displeasure. Uh, it certainly didn't help that I've had to get her out twice, so she was in a very bad mood. Invariably, um, territoriality is far worse than temperament, so I expect to put up a fight when you first enter the vivarium, certainly if it's to remove the snake for handling. But generally, once they're out, they can be handled with relative ease. This, this is uh, a known uh, aggressive snake in the tank, and she seems to be relatively compliant for me at the moment, which is fabulous. Um, so yeah, I think that we, when it comes to breeding and when it comes to cycling, we can keep them on standard northern circadian rhythms. We can rely on our winters, whether that be US or UK. We can rely on barometric pressure changes and raising the humidity to be able to mimic the wet seasons, cools and hot seasons. And we should be able to get copulation. There shouldn't really be a need for any sort of protracted brumation period. These animals are relatively... Uh, uh, stable temperature wise with nighttime lows midwinter at 19 daytime highs midsummer at 30, 34 35 so if we're keeping them at 30 32 in winter we might take them down to 27 28 we'll bang the humidity up and once they're up to size copulation will follow uh, eggs are incubated as a standard colubrid egg at 28 to 29 degrees celsius 55 to 65 days um, they are large eggs um, and they, they produce good sized babies but they were, again they will take small meals because they are elongate, they are not stocking so this, it, this is a lot of snake but it is hard to describe because there is so much body length as well but she's an absolute, to be honest you are really giving a good show of yourself you know you are doing really well aren't you, yeah you are gorgeous I can hear you, I am not going to hear you do your research as always. The beauty snakes are an excellent next step snake. And for somebody who's potentially wanting to challenge themselves in, say, the temperament or territoriality departments, that's great. They're not a particularly delicate species. They are quite hardy. They're not going to fall ill easily. They've got excellent appetites. So the challenge isn't really day to day husbandry, more day to day working with, manipulation, handling, cleaning, and the rest. 
She's very keen on people's faces, and I think that's a trait that follows a lot of the beauty snakes. So always try and keep her pointed away. Uh, never try and back her up so that she's uh, looking at you. She, they seem keen on noses and eyes, so uh, we'll make sure that that part stays pointing away. I hope this has been a useful video. A truly fantastic species, well worthy of research for your next step snake, a super herb species and now with the boa and python markets just beginning to ease up the colubrids are now becoming a lot more popular uh, and things that were bred widely a long time ago are being snapped up a lot so a real opportunity and just such a fabulous snake and they offer so many different problems to the ground dwelling or burrowing pythons you know with the sizes of enclosures and the branches and the foliage it's just a real opportunity to do something slightly different be slightly left field We'll be back with more videos soon from me, Chaz, and Paul at Snakes and Adders. Peace.